Hello, everyone. As always, welcome to the podcast, World Order. This is a little bit more of a somber episode um, because we had some pretty crazy news come out today with Ring of Honor. As always, I'm your host, Matt. With me tonight, you know him, you love him, the ravishing Ryan Coddington. <laughs> yeah, shave the mustache off for this one. <laughs> uh, look, it's Hitman Jeff Hall. Jeff, I think this is the first video that you and I have been in together since the CM Punk debut. Uh, your boy's working to the bone, so I mean, but probably I am, I am with you. Capital uh, I'm not gonna make that joke. So <laughs> I mean uh, I see Jeff every other week, so you know. Well, I will say I can't wait to see you guys bright mm. and incredibly early on Saturday. Saturday. Anyway, Let's go. For Let's go. Next gen wrestling's oh god. I keep wanting to say the boat adventure because that uh, I'm so excited for them to come to Richmond. But this is Nightmare in Old Town. Nightmare in the Old City. Nightmare in the Old City. My bad. Um, I'm I'm very excited to be in Knoxville. Very very excited. But that's not why we're here. Mm. I love NGW. It's not why we're here. Um, This might benefit NGW, but we'll we'll cover that later. Uh, Ring of Honor came out with a statement earlier today. Uh, that I'm going to read right from their social media. Throughout the pandemic, our top priority was to keep everyone healthy and safe. And despite not producing any live events over 18 months, we were able to keep everyone fully contracted. We now find ourselves at a time where we need to make changes to our business operations and are and our planning a pivot for Ring of Honor with a new mission and strategy. The year will culminate with final battle in December and we'll be taking the first quarter of 2022 Uh, to work internally to reimagine Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor has the most dedicated fans in the industry, and we appreciate their loyalty and patience as we reconceptualize Ring of Honor. We anticipate returning to live events in April for the Super super Card of Honor with a new fan-focused product and provide a unique experience for wrestling fans. So additionally coming out of that, that that is the big thing, is that there will be a break following Final Battle, to what they expect to be super card of honor. Um, Here is where things are getting a bit more interesting. Um, So uh, everyone, all right, let me, let me find the exact thing here. Uh, Everyone from Ring of Honor has effectively been released or their contracts will not be renewed at the end of the year. Um, so, is I'm sorry, this is just really hard to kind of keep up with. Based on John Ross Sapp's reports, um, Ring of Honor releases are effective at the end of the year. If a contract goes beyond that, they will continue to be paid until March 31st. Um, Fightful has also been told that Joe Coff told Talent he had multiple meetings trying to fight for Ring of Honor, but ultimately Sinclair made the call. Talent was told there was some type of TV show that would be in place after Final Battle, but weren't told what that would be. Uh, Talent was also told to contact Greg uh, Gilland, Gilliland, if they want to work elsewhere, and if they're under a deal, they'll work on making that happen. Um, So this has been met with a lot of different responses. A lot. (laughs) A lot of people think this is the end of Ring of Honor, and making comparisons to... uh, WCW's dying days, which I think is something that might be thrown around a little little quickly. Um, They have already put out that they are hoping for a show uh, come April, Supercard of Honor. Um, But guys, I got I got to ask, how do you feel about this? I'll let Jeff go first. I feel like this (laughs) has affected him the most. Uh, This is terrible. Um, This is awful. Um. For the OG guys, even more OG or than me, you know, Ring of Honor is, like I said in the text queue, a pillar of wrestling and has been actually wrestling for the purest, the purest of wrestling. Uh, and I just never thought that one day it would be gone or even, I don't know, they've, they've default, they've just always operated in their own little niche that's always worked. And the fact that 
they're not going to anymore for a little bit, I guess, or this could be the end is it's just ridiculous. Ring of Honor wrestling is a national treasure treasure, you know, in the realm of wrestling at least. Um, but I, I, to, to piggyback off what you said, I don't think this is WCW in his dying days. I mean, that was just a b- bunch of things getting sideways and bad booking and contracts out the wazoo. If, if they can, if this really is, Hey, let's just take some time off to kind of, uh, um, uh, fortify the fort, you know what I'm saying? Then try to come back. Then, you know, that's that, you know, maybe it's, maybe, maybe for all, I mean, it could be in the end, don't get me wrong, but maybe mm-hmm. this is like, Hey, get our stuff together and then we can come back. But now if you're telling me that Sinclair saying that well, we already got a TV show lined up, well, that's, that's bad news. Yeah. Um, I, I have a lot of thoughts, but uh, R- Ryan, I'm, I'm going to hand it off to you before I get out some opinions here that may or may not yeah. have stated on the show prior. Yeah. Um, Cause I know we kind of did this about two weeks ago on the Russell cast. Um, and it was actually, the, this wasn't on the horizon. It wasn't like we saw into the future. It was something that you would legitimately just sparked a conversation about. And we made an episode about it. Um, I'll start from the Sinclair um perspective of things um in comparison to wcw um the last wcw pay uh, pay pay-per-view was greed and i think this is what this is um and i was talking to jeff earlier about really thinking about where the revenue is coming from as far as ring of honor um outside of maybe some merch sales outside of um you know pay-per-view ticket sales over you know uh, they've only had a couple this year, and if you are if you're an honor club like I am, it's it's your money every month. Um, that's the revenue. Uh, maybe what you're getting kicked kicked back from, uh, you know Sinclair or whatever other various medias you're on. Um, that's really what that's coming down to, and I think it's um, I think we've all kind of saw this coming from that perspective. Um, there's no money being made and it's sad because to Jeff's point, ring of honor is a cornerstone of professional wrestling. A majority of who you see on TV every week, whether it's one day, two day, or all five days of the week, at, at, at least half have gone through the ring of honor doors at least once. And the mark if this is it that um ring of honor as a whole is made um i think i don't think there's enough that you can say about the lasting legacy um i've been talking to talent um essentially since this evening um just reaching out to check in um maybe making sure everyone is all right and you know um for a lot of talent, this caught them by surprise. Um, there was one talent in particular I talked to that said that they did not find out until they found out on so on on a social media. Um, I don't know why. I don't know how the proceedings went down. Um, but it's it's kind of the same boat though. Like everybody's finding out. It's kind of like this, you know kind of take a step back breathe and it's all right well we have one show at least and then nothing so um the last thing i'll say and then matt will kick it back over is something that um brian malona said on the on the wrestlecast um and he was our he was our first interviewer it got started with a offer to give him as much coffee as i humanly had in my home um um, but it was um, something that he has said on the show. And this is at the beginning of the pandemic. If you are a fan of a professional wrestler who is going to be unemployed or a free agent, the best way to show support is to go to their merch store, buy their merch. Um, I don't know how that's going to happen. What's going to happen to the merch? 
PWTs. Um, yeah, a lot of it is through pro wrestling tees. Um, but just keep that in mind. Yeah, um, keep that in mind here as um, we move forward. But I can assure you that um, the wrestling world is shook right now. Um, and the worst part is we 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 know what's happened. I think the scariest part is the is is the unknown what's going to happen after final battle and um yeah it's going to be very very interesting so Sinclair Broadcasting confuses the hell out of me um for those of you who weren't here for it, we did recently do a show. I don't know if, how long ago. It may have been a month. Um, but with within this summertime, I think since CM Punk has returned, if that gives you some kind of timeline. Um, someone proposed the question online of could Ring of Honor be in AEW shoes? Um, and, and I was pretty emphatic that I said no because I didn't feel that Sinclair Broadcasting supported Ring of Honor enough to make it a show on TNT or to make it a show on mainstream cable. Um, and w- where this is confusing for me is they took care of their wrestlers. No company, I think, took care of their guys as much as Ring of Honor did. They, they told them, hey, we love you. We're going to keep paying you. We're not going to have any shows when we are ready. And when you guys are ready and we know what's going on, we're going to be on it. We had so many wrestlers from ring of honor come on this show and discuss how ring of honor has taken care of them so well during that, during this entire pandemic. Um, so it really makes me question what has gone on over these past uh, couple of, of weeks, months, even? I'm, I'm not too sure. Um, I, I am very curious to see from a business aspect what happens. Uh, and the, the tweet that got out by Sean Ross Sapp, um, Joe Coff told talent he had multiple meetings trying to fight for Ring of Honor, but ultimately Sinclair made the call that we are going to stop and rebrand or whatever this is, reconceptualize. Um, to me, it says that the owner doesn't have faith in the, in the company. Um, I am a thousand percent projecting. Um, I, I do not have any inside information. This is not me leaking anything. So please no one take it that way. Uh, this is just me seeing what's been presented and formulating your opinion on it uh, before anyone comes for me in the comments. But um, a lot of speculation online on People may be trying to buy Ring of Honor, whether it's WWE or AEW, to just have the access to the library for, for Ring of Honor. Because if you're uh, look, if you are WWE, you want you want that library. You want that for your network, and you want that for all of your documentaries. Because just Seth Rollins alone, the amount of work that he has put into Ring of Honor, everyone else who they've had. NXT is built off of what Ring of Honor was, just presented in WWE Limelight. Like, that's all it is. Um, I I don't I don't know what to think of the people in charge right now. Um, and and the wrestlers, I have nothing but love and respect for because they have been nothing but adamant this entire time and and they have gone to bat for this company harder than I think anyone really has um, for anyone's company. I don't think anyone 
supports their business as much as the Ring of Honor wrestlers do. That may be a hot take, but I, I have interviews to go with that. Um, I, I just don't understand from a business aspect. It doesn't make sense to me. Either are you all in or all out? And, and the wording on that is not lost on me. I understand Ring of Honor has been hurting since that event. But if you want this company to be successful, if you want Ring of Honor to be as good as it can be, mm-hmm. you need to financially back it. And I just um, don't see that from Sinclair. I don't. No, and you're absolutely right. And I don't think they're – and they've been with them for 10 years now, I believe. At least since 2011. Yeah, they- so – I think it was 10 years back in April. So we're over 10, 10 years. And, you know, just sometimes it's good to get a change. Um, I will say that um, in the same breath as, you know, ownership, not, you know, not having faith. is what you put it. Um, uh, or, fa- or faith in a product. Um you're right. The product has gotten stale since the start of the pandemic. Um, and I think that what makes ring of honor um, ring, you know, ring of honor is the fans. And the one problem we've been talking about for a while, and it started back in July when we were at best in the world, and at the time, we blamed it on exhaustion from not being in, from not being at live events. Um, I don't think that people from Sinclair realize, or even people from Ring of Honor realize, uh, how how much a live crowd affects what what your product is. And when I and when I say, um, you look at WWE, they brought live fans back in July, AEW since May, um, NWA has had fans, um, very little, but they've they've had they've they've had fans, um, and I completely understand you as a company. Your standpoint is we want to keep our talent safe. We want to create a safe working environment. We want to ensure that you're coming to a place of work where you can perform and, you know, be, be in, be in a safe place. Um, Look around though. You have, you have NFL full stadium, NBA full stadium or full, full, full arena. You have NHL, close close to full arena um you have major league base baseball at full at full capacity for the world series um a aw is on two weekly shows um wwe two three weekly shows if you include nxt nxt has fans you know and it seems like there's a difference between playing it playing it safe and not moving forward. And I think that's kind of where we're at here. Um, and I, I don't want to pinpoint just one thing on everything that's happened because I think that, you know, not having fans is a really big part of what's going on. Um, but as we alluded to weeks ago when we had a discussion on, on the WrestleCast, um, there's a lot more that's kind of turned the tide here. Um, you know, let's think about what time they're on TV during the week. 1 a.m. on a Sunday morning. I told, I went, to, went, went to dinner with my parents earlier this evening. And, you know, I was talking to my dad about it. And my dad was like, oh, no way. I said, yeah. Um, did you know that they are on ABC, on your, on your local ABC channel? at 1 a.m. on a Sunday morning? Yep. He said, no, I didn't. Because you want to know why? Because who in their right mind 
is going to put that on 1 a.m. on a Sunday morning. And here's the other thing. Who's going to watch it when you can watch it on fight? Well, no, I get it. <laughs> but, but when you can turn around and, and, and watch it on fight. You know, and so there's more than just the fan aspect to this. And I think both parties are responsible for what for for what's happening. Um, I I just think that this could have been 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 avoided um, had there been support from the broadcasting aspect and the willingness to move forward from the Ring of Honor front office staff. I, judging from the tweets, I, I don't think I'm holding it against the front office at the moment. Um, I, I do think things may not have been going in the direction that they wanted. I still think Ring of Honor is dealing with the mass, mass exodus from AEW's foundation. I mean, they lost a lot of their star power, and they're still in the process of building that. I mean, uh, we've seen the rise of Bandito in this time period. Um, God, <laughs> also speaking out I'm sorry Yeah, they lost talent who they had at the top of their card mm. due to that yeah um, Bandito's off to GCW already I literally had that saved on a screenshot he has uh, three matches set for I believe December 3rd, 4th and 17th correct and so, then uh, final battle is the 11th final battle is the 11th which we will be at because it's on a Saturday year, a, a, it's on a Saturday, but B, for all we know, it could be the last one. And, you know, if I'm going to be there, if there's going to be a Ring of Honor funeral, I'm going to be there for it. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I don't – well, I don't think the whole time. But if we're asking all these questions, but we've, I think we've answered a lot of them our, our damn selves – if you're on a Sunday at one in the morning and me and Kyle were talking about this earlier and I mean, I've been going to ring of honor shows since, I don't know, 08, 09. I mean, I'm watching since 05, 06, but 08, 09 and, you know, a front row ticket in 08 or 09 and 05 were $50. And here we are in 2021 and a front row ticket $50. Well, you know, there you go. And it's not, it's what you touched on earlier, Matt. It's not that it's not a good product. It's not that that the front office is necessarily bad. It, it, you know, it, it's, it's it's not like you look at their stuff and like, oh man, like well, the past five years they've had bad booking and TV hasn't been great. None of it's been good. No, it's been fine. It's been it's been good. It's just that all these things, the pandemic, are compiling plus that are compounding on top of each other, and you know by maybe by not say they didn't pay the talent like you know I, I don't know I just think Sinclair kind of already had it in their mind I I think the key is is what you said oh well they already have a show lined up oh well well that means it's over to me it's done you know they, they they've already they've, Sinclair's already made their mind I mean they're not going to let said show get a six-month run and put Ring of Honor back on you know and TV times and TV slots are hard to come by. So I don't know. I mean, I guess we'll see. But unfortunately, it's I think it's what it gets down to all with any company from, you know, your mom and pop's bakery up to, you know, Google or Apple or, you know, if 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 it doesn't make dollars and it don't make sense. And, and you're right. You're right. Um it's sad, but you know. your nose? No, I didn't. How did you blow that candle out? I didn't. <laughs> I'm getting oh, worked here, Jeff. I'm getting worked. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I. Because you, you, usually things are indicative of poorly run, you yeah. know, and. And yeah. I, don't, I don't think Ring of Honor is that. I mean, their history has always been rocky in terms of the financial aspect 
and making it happen. I mean, that's the entire thing of how we got Kerry Silken uh, in charge and then him giving – or, well, not giving, but uh, selling his portion to Sinclair. You know, uh, we – like I said, we we had this whole thing uh, yeah. we talked about <laughs> – about, uh, I mean, they, they've almost been out of business two, three times now. Yeah. Um, I, I just I, – I am curious – where do we go from here? What this new show is going to look like? Is this NXT going to NXT 2.0? Are we getting ROH 2.0? Um, oh, jeez, don't say that. Uh, you know, they better not be. you got to think there's going to be some fundamental changes that happen with this show. Um, when I when I first saw that there was uh, that you know this was. Essentially, they were going on a hiatus. My first thought was, oh, this would be a great time for them to transition into just being a digital platform, you know, and just being essentially what an NWA is right now. Um, Because I think that's kind of their best option. And I know you said they already have something lined up, and I have no idea what the hell that means, which, you know, but so does that mean that? there's already another show they have lined up in their place or that the show that's lined up is another ring of honor show. So the word is that there was going to be a TV show. And the word was that it was a television show for ring of ring. honor. Okay. Uh, 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 that, so a ring of honor television made, show in their spot. But that has apparently, I believe been put on hold until we, uh, okay. until I believe April. I mean, reading off of this, reading off of this, we anticipate returning to live events in April for the Super Card of Honor. Anticipate is the key word there. They they are hoping to be there at this time. I just I I what is there to refocus on? We're we're trying to change our product to I guess grab more fans, but ultimately, you know, what, what are the general criticisms of Ring of Honor? I was on here weeks ago stating that I feel that they don't push storylines as much, where they are much more about having a great match, which is good. I love great matches. I love uh, Ring of Honor in ring work is some of the best work you'll see, period, in professional wrestling. Um, maybe not as much at this exact moment. Um, just because a lot of the guys who were in Ring of Honor are a bunch of other locations. Seth Rollins is still one of the best workers in the world. Don't don't be fooled just because he worked at WWE. He's still one of the best in the world. 100%. Um, you know? This, I mean, ask yourself this. This is, this could be modern wrestling at its worst. This could be wrestling cannibalizing itself in the sense of, you look at AEW, and they're making money out the wazoo. Well, well, we think they're making money out the wazoo. Well, whether they're making money or not, they're they're getting ratings. So well, when that, it's all and said, TNT, said and done, that yes, are paying them for to be yeah, on TV. Yeah, when all said and done, that'll translate to money at some point. You know, um, WWE's yeah, WWE's had got a 60, 70 year head start on everybody. So there's that. Um, so, you know, St. Clair could be looking like, well, hell, everybody else is making money, you know, why can't mm-hmm. Ring of Honor? But you're also, there are two different things. Uh, um, I guess I'm not getting on AEW, but I'm getting on AEW. The, the way that comes about, like, never happens. You know, how often do you get, uh, um, you know, Tony Khan's a billionaire, yeah, sure, but his dad's a billionaire and they have, deep pockets and can stroke a check for whatever the hell they want to stroke it for. And I'm not knocking them for that. No. That's that, that's a good situation to be in, but that's not how it works ever. Yeah. <laughs> so. I will say Sinclair is something, oh God, let me pull this back up. Because the amount of money that Sinclair Broadcasting makes in general is friggin' ridiculous. So just on that, you know, they could be looking like, well, hell, everybody else is making money. And I, and I can tell you this right now, I just speak for myself, but if we're getting, 
if we're getting a, like a colorful Ring of Honor with with uh, skits and bits and <laughs> dinosaurs and spooky ghouls, I just kill it. Just kill it. <laughs> I won't be able to take it. Again, that's my own personal opinion, which is not gospel, but I'd rather it but like I'd rather it be an online type deal or a giant catalog or I I don't know something than so, than that. Here's some quick math for you. On June second, great day, absolutely fantastic day. Except it wasn't this year with all those mass WWE releases on that day. Um, it was announced that Sinclair is a Fortune 500 company having an annual revenue of 5.9 billion dollars in 2020. The company at the head has the money. It just needs to invest in the product. As far as I'm concerned, make it so Ring of Honor is readily available. Get them on TV. Make a deal with Spike. I don't care. I don't care if people are going to sit there and be like, oh, Impact did that first. I don't care. Get them on TV somewhere. You can do it. You have relationships with. Let me pull up this list as well. Uh, they got all these political views, but we ain't gonna go into that. Let's go to programming. So yeah, on New Central, on CW, put them on CW. Put them on WGN. They have I mean, an affiliate with Fox. Like put it on the Fox affiliate show. Let me uh, let me ask. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I, I, I'm just saying that you have the means. You are capable of doing it. You know, are you just paying to have this to say you have a wrestling company or do you want this to be a successful wrestling company? Put the money to back it. Um, maybe maybe I am incredibly off on this, um, but yeah, they went above and beyond for the wrestlers. They showed they can do that. If this is just, if this is just a pause and we got to figure out who is with the company and who we're going to promote and who is this and what are we doing? That's fine. That's fine. And come April, let's roll and have ring of honor at, at its finest. Um, let, me, let, let me ask you this. Do you think, I thought this a while ago too. Um, and I just listened into podcasts and some people with some inside information. So take everything with a grain of salt. Do you think a Ring of Honor maybe? Because Sinclair only Sinclair, it's on Sinclair's show, but they don't know anything about wrestling, and yeah. that's any generally any any cable television, whatever, whatever. So, do you think Ring of Honor, with the help of um, the elite in Japan and New Japan and all that, do you think they hot shot it themselves? Um, in the sense of, so you got you have. Um, the Bucks, Cody, uh, New Japan wrestlers. So they all come in. Because if you notice before, I guess, pre-AEW, you know, if someone was disgruntled and they were out of their contract, you were going to Ring of Honor for, 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 the, for the most part. Yeah. Um, so all those guys come over the Ring of Honor and you got to think business is booming, you know, with and, – and I'm not blaming them. I'm not blaming the talent, you know, Um you know, and business is booming and then all of a sudden they're gone and maybe Sinclair is like, well, what happened? You know, not, not, not knowing, not knowing that what, you know, what they were doing, it wasn't sustainable. And I guess nobody, well, not, not, nobody saw AEW coming, but, you know, but then I also said that a while ago too. So you have the Bucks, you have Cody, you know, they come out, they use Ring of Honor, they do, what was the first show? All In, right? All In was the independent show. The independent. Well, when I when you say independent, you mean independent using Ring of Honor's everything. Well, mm -hmm. Ring, of, Ring of Honor volunteered it though. That, well, that is yeah. the thing. You had well, you had Impact wrestlers. You had New Japan well, wrestlers. You had uh, no, no, no. The, general wrestlers. I mean, Joey Janela was nowhere, but he had a match no, no, no. page on the show. No, that's fair. You know? But I mean, but I mean, Penis Ring of Honor's Ring, Ring of Honor's equipment, Ring of Honor's lighting. Ring of Honor's referees, Ring of Honor's nuts and bolts, you know, everything. And then those guys hightail it and get out of there and start their own thing, which uh, which they're more than 
welcome to. I'm not again. I'm not knocking them. Get your money. But you know, like I said, do you think it was a man like from a dollars and cents like numbers, as in like Sinclair was like, man, this thing's booming. Or for all we know, maybe mm-hmm. they wanted out then. And was like, oh, well, never mind. You know, look, look, this thing's turning itself around, not having, an, you know, again, anybody at Sinclair, they have no idea who the elite are. They probably couldn't name 10 wrestlers on Ring of Honor. You know? Yeah. Well, so hold the thought. So um, I want to piggyback off of that because I think, I think you're right. I think they did hot shot themselves a little bit, yeah. at least, whether, whether, they, whether they did it subconsciously or not. And oh, um, hold on, hold on, Kyle. Let me clarify. I'm not by no means am I not blaming, not blaying AEW or any of those guys. That yeah. You're free to do what you want. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm not, they, they didn't do anything wrong. I'm just saying that if you're looking at it through a Sinclair, you know, checking the books, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think, I think you kind of got a glimpse of kind of how, how not so great things were. Um, when you look at something like G1 Supercard, um, you're on a huge stage. You have a huge opportunity. Um, This is on you. And this is kind of where it started to turn. They had no business being on that show. None. Um, And there may have been... (sighs) I think at the time Jeff Cobb was with Ring Ring of Honor, but I think he was the never open weight champion. So he had the barn burner opening match against Osprey. Um, but you look at the ladder match, the ladder match was, was fine. The crowd didn't like it because Taven didn't win. But every single Ring of Honor match that was on that card couldn't hold a flame to what New Japan was doing. And I think, you know, you can say that AEW had a had a had a hand in it, um, but that's no. I mean, in a way, that's no fault of their own. Not know, at all. They're doing they're 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 doing their thing. They want to do this. Go right ahead. Um, but I but I think that was kind of um, a great example of what of what we were going to get move what we were going to get moving forward. Um, and there's no doubt. The talent is there. There's no doubt that they're capable. Um, so from the wrestling side of it, because it takes two to tango, from the wrestling side of it, and this is what Matt and I discussed um, a few weeks back, is that you're not bringing what you, what you can to – to the table you can be doing more than what you're doing and example and i'll keep swinging back to it because you want do you want supercard was a huge opportunity to be like we are we are ring of honor we don't have we don't have cody we don't have the bucks um i think marty marty was still around um you know hangman's gone uh we're losing guys this is a great opportunity for us as a company to come out and just establish our dominance and kind of put ourselves on the map as our own entity. And I think they needed to, and they didn't. And one of many, many examples, but. Tag, I'm taking it uh, as a hot tag. So yes, Supercar of Honor was a, a shining moment of where we are currently with, I said Supercar of Honor, G1 Supercar. Uh, of where we are, in my opinion, of Ring of Honor. I love Ring of Honor. Um, this is my biggest issue with Ring of Honor, and this is what I was saying a couple weeks ago on this subject. Ring of Honor delays fan gratification to an extreme amount. Um, for instance, and, and Jeff, you are you have been on this, that why isn't Hangman Adam Page AEW world champion yet? You have been on this now. And they, they've been telling the story for two two years now, roughly. They have been doing, the, at that time, this story with Marty Skrull trying to be the world champion since 2018, 2017. Like, it had been on the cusps. We had been there for a triple threat title match. Uh, right there, right at UMBC. 
Um, and the moment was there and the fans wanted it and you could have had a huge baby face moment. And while you did choose to change titles, you put on Matt Taven, who the fans wanted to be world champion seven months prior. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I love Ring of Honor, but they they wait too long. And I think that's also why I was so against PCO as a world champion. Um, because it's the one time that they really were like, oh, he's getting over big? Okay, let's do it. Because I think they were panicking. Um, I, I think they were kind of in free fall moment at that point. When, look, man, make your money where you're at. PCO was an attraction. He, he's not your world champion. He was an attraction. Like that, that, I feel like that sounds very shitty, but you're not there to see PCO be world champion. You're there to see PCO almost die. That's his spot. That's what you want to see. You want to see Marty to be champion. This is, once again, all prior to all allegations, all, all anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just so we're clear on this before people are thinking I'm out here doing things I'm not. The fans wanted Marty Scurll as champion at that time. The fans wanted a number of people as champion. Uh, we have been clamoring here for for a long time on why hasn't Kenny King won a world title yet. Um, I, I don't believe in hot shotting the title, but you know there 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 are wrestlers who these fans rally behind, and we just wait too long. And I think that no, does I, lose some fans. No, I'm 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 with you. You guys know my motto. You could have won it and dropped it already by now. Yeah. You know, there's there's a lot of guys and girls where uh, may, maybe you put it on them the wrong moment, as in you know not seven months later, but yeah, you know a pay per view or two or three, four or you know before or after you think they should get it, and that's fine. But, you know, like you said, but when you get to seven months later, said I, person should have won it or dropped it by, you know, by, by that yeah. point. Um, so that's my only issue with that. Additionally, I feel like the Supercard really hurt their relationship with New Japan. Mm -hmm. um, primarily looking at the spot that was the tag title match that had the unannounced run in from Enzo and Kaz um, that New Japan was not aware of. So there was a legitimate shoot fight in the middle of what was supposed to be a scripted moment that no one was made aware of. Um, that, that to me is a black eye. Um, and since then, they have struggled having a good relationship with New Japan. I mean, I know we're also looking at pandemic in that time period and that has halted things. But, I mean, think about it. We're not getting an insane amount of crossover with New Japan Strong and Ring of Honor. I mean, you're seeing some Ring of Honor guys over at New Japan Strong, but they're, they're not showing up at Ring of Honor. Kenta's not showing up at Ring of Honor. Jay White, not showing up at Ring of Honor. Juice Robinson, not showing up at Ring of Honor. They're an impact. New Japan Strong. Some of them are showing up in AEW. This Buck can't fat. Up at GCW. I just can't fathom living in a world where impacts on television and it's still a company and Ring of Honor isn't. It's... Um, impact's <sighs> doing the right things right now. And well, I mean, I'm not saying they're not, but yeah. But I I was I was gonna circle back to that is that impact and TNA and throwing global force, who fucking cares. Um GF does you know, yeah. Um been on the brink. What a horrible name that was. Jeff Jarrett's a horrible person. Um, you know, they've been on the brink of just utter destruction and collapse and failure more times than I can count. But yet somehow through through the ashes, through through the ember, you know, arises a phoenix. And somehow it's global force thing. It's um, it's it's now we're on. Listen, don't bring, don't drag Rinka King's name through the mud. 
All right. They've already been through enough. Okay. My point is, is that there is a way to get this done. And to Jeff's point, if, if, if Impact Wrestling can be on TV for two hours a week, there's no reason why a Ring of Honor shouldn't be on TV for one hour a week. There's no reason. Um, now, obviously, you know, you've got to be in bed with the right people. You know, and that, I think Sinclair, <laughs> who, yeah. who we have have already owned several of these broadcast groups, you can you're right on the CW. <laughs> yeah, but Sinclair's uh, but not all in on them. That's and that's and that's the thing. I'm on board with Jeff on this one. We've already established <laughs> here in the last hour that Sinclair doesn't give a fuck about Ring Ring of Honor, or we would have fought. To make this work and here we are um we are a month and a half of ring of honor left potentially yeah. well i, I do i do feel like we need to throw this way potentially for the for the foreseeable future and i know you've already said it once it is that weird. the is that is that is that the tentative date is to come back to be ready for super card of honor which you know what? Well, best case scenario, they get their ish ish together. Um, you know, they bring in some talent. They get a show put together. It's great. Um, my ultimate concern is you just released your entire roster. Yes, and yes. that's and that's the red flag here. Is that I don't see any anything left after you have no talent. If you thought there was going to be a chance and you're paying your staff through the end of March and you're hoping that April is the month you come back, why do you release your staff? Why do you release all of your talent? What is going on? So I I had two thoughts on this. And and one is, I think, the optimist and one's the pessimist. Well, they, they have to. I mean, well, go ahead. Go ahead. So, so the optimist in me is that Ring of Honor, up to this point, has done right by their wrestlers uh, all the way up to, I think, today of people finding out that they're going to be released on the internet. And I, I look, we give WWE a lot of crap for this. I feel that Ring of Honor has the history and the wrestlers coming on here enough for me to say that Ring of Honor has gone, gotten to their back and taken care of them as much as they could, that I'm sure something may have fallen through. It wouldn't surprise me if maybe it didn't, cause, and I would hope that uh, there was supposed to be something that went out and it just didn't, something stupid. Um, but I feel like Ring of Honor has gotten at least some good faith enough where I can say they've taken care of the wrestlers well enough that you know, they're taking care of them. The the optimist in me is saying that they're doing this for the wrestlers. So if they're not on board with the rebranding, they're not tied down for years to something that they don't believe in. I really want to believe that. I genuinely do, because I do feel like they have tried really hard to do right by the wrestlers at every step, by the talent in general. Brian Zane, you know, now a wrestler, but he, he is included in that. He, he released a video earlier today. I haven't had a chance to watch it. And I got to tell you, that's probably going to be one for, for when we're on the road here because I'm genuinely curious to hear his hour-long thoughts of it all. Um, oh, you're muted. You're on mute, Hoss. Thanks. I had a toot. Um, <laughs> um, a little bit unprofessional. Um the overall tone of that was just one of overall somberness for the first half and then hope for the second half. Um, and I think that's where we're all at now is, yeah, it hurts right now because a, we don't know what's going to happen. B we're potentially looking at the dying days of ring of honor. However, there's a, there's a glimpse of light at the end of the tunnel where something could happen. Uh, ring of honor could get sold. Ring of Honor could be on TV again in a repeat in a refutable time slot. Let's not stick them, you know, you know, 
Sunday at 1 a.m. Inconsistently, yeah. That's yeah. absolutely ridiculous. And the reason it's inconsistent is just what you what they don't what book their weekends. It. Yeah, they don't book they don't their weekends, so they just put it in wherever there's an open hour, which is yeah. ridiculous. But uh, so. so I really want to try and close out my thought on, on just why they would release their talent is I do think on one hand, they're trying to do right by them. And if you're, if you're not down with us rebranding, go where you want to go. And also if you're not down with what we're doing, go where you want to go. I, I really think that we are going to see some talent move over to AEW. We'll probably see some talent go to WWE. Although they say they're not looking for independent wrestlers. I think that's some bullshit. They're going to take some of the best talent that they can get because they'd be dumb not to. Um, I don't know. They've got, they've got, they've got Tony Meatball right now in 2.0. They've got Lash, the stupid face. How how are you going to hate my man, D'Angelo? Forget about it. Because he is the biggest Goomba POS. (laughs) Oh my gosh. He's awful. (laughs) Lash is awful. Oh my gosh. I, she's, I just Wendy Williams. she's just Wendy but, Williams. They just made yeah. a Wendy Williams character. She's she's a she's a she's a shitty version of Wendy Williams. No, no, no. She's no. better than Wendy Williams. Wendy, Wendy Williams, Williams does that by herself. Yeah, I was about to say Wendy I'm, Williams could probably could probably wrestle though. Wendy look, 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 this is a wrestling podcast, but I'm doing this. Wendy Williams spent five minutes comparing social media followers with someone before going, yeah, he's dead. Yeah, no. no. Well, because Last Wendy, legend, even if it's a horrible gimmick, will never be worse than Wendy Williams. I'd yeah. say that. Look, Wendy Williams is a real life optometron. That's a machine. <laughs> and she's a fan ball. <laughs> um, but I I do imagine they're going to get picked up. Yeah. Independent wrestling companies are probably going to benefit from this. Um, I'm curious to see if maybe we'll see any of these Ring of Honor talents show up in places like Next Gen Wrestling um, because there's, the option's going to be there. Um, I got to be honest with you. There are four men who I think I care the most about where they end up. Um, I'm going to say five. I'm going to say five. Uh, two of them, of course, being the Briscoes. Um, they're not made for WWE television. They'll never, they will never be in WWE as far as I'm concerned. They cannot be themselves in WWE. They're not going to be there. I see them in AEW or NWA. Can they be themselves in AEW? Um, they- I'm just saying, can they? Mostly, they you know, like, I, I just can't just can't wait to see um, the the Briscoes in AEW. God, it just could be so great to see them getting kicked upside the head by a Nike Dunk with spikes on the side of it. Oh, I just it's gonna be yes, my most favorite thing to yes. watch. It wasn't any different than when they were facing the Young Bucks in Ring of Honor. It's not any different. <laughs> Remember how good those matches were. The Briscoes, Kenny King, Jay Lethal, Jonathan Gresham. So Briscoes are two there. Those are the five. Those are the that five. Sound, that didn't sound like Dalton Castle. It doesn't. That you, didn't sound like I, that. Didn't, I love Dalton that didn't Castle. sound like that didn't sound like Vincent. That didn't sound like Shane Taylor Promotions. There's a fuck ton of talent on here. Yeah, there is. Don is a WWE five. guy. I'm saying and, the yeah. five who I am most interested in where they go. Because mm. here's the thing. Jay Lethal is the franchise. He is the franchise of Ring of Honor. Is he going to be there for the rebranding? Or is he gone? That, to me, is going to tell me everything I need to know about this. Well, I, mm. I can tell you what's going to tell me everything I need to know. We go to this pay-per-view, and you don't see a lot of lighting. And you look at the merch and everything's like, oh, we're having a two for five for whatever, whatever. That, that'll tell me everything I need to know. Like, everything uh, I need to know. 
how, how Jay Lethal reacts is going to be big to me because he's he's a lifer. He's not someone who's really leaving Ring of Honor. He had a stint in Impact. He hasn't really showed any interest going anywhere else, despite the fact that he probably should have and gotten paid. Uh, Kenny King, uh, look, dude, that's just a personal one. Um, he should already be world champion. And he yep. could step he could step into most programs anywhere and compete for the world title. But don't don't go to WWE because him and Jay Lethal will be a tag team. No, no. Him, <laughs> him and Carmelo Hayes. They'll be the lethals or the J J Dane or Dangerous J. They'll be the 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 Car- I'm about to say they'll be the ballers because Carmelo oh, Hayes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he'll he'll uh, Kenny Kane will be uh, King James. They'll be they'll be money money moneying in no time. Yeah, yeah. Um, um Kenny Chris King's goes, not going to NXT, guys. Huh? I said I said Kenny King's not going to NXT because he's forty years old and and he, and he's under six foot five, two hundred fifty pounds. So. You're right. He's going straight to the main roster. So, there you go. There you um, go. Briscoes are kind of a similar in that uh, if they're leaving Ring of Honor because they can't be the Briscoes. That's telling me everything I need to know. Where Jonathan Gresham goes is paramount, I think, as well. Gresham should be winning the world title at final battle unless they are vacating all titles and he is winning it at Supercard of Honor. Jonathan Gresham is, more than anything, Right now, the most compelling thing in Ring of Honor because he's having the best matches and he's had the best stories. He may be here. I love Vincent, but... Uh, I'd say they're on the same plane, but for different reasons. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. One's character, one's work. Um, Yeah, he... Like you said, Matt, I mean, I think he... Jonathan Gresham could be... And I don't... This isn't a bad thing, but he could be your last Ring of Honor champion, heavyweight champion. Yeah. And and that is going to be telling me because otherwise it's going to be Bandito. And I, I like Bandito, I really do. Are you telling me you think Bandito right now represents what Ring of Honor is to you? Because that's always been Jonathan Gresham, and it has been Jonathan Gresham since the pandemic has started, and he became the pure champion. Uh, Bandito is great. I love Bandito. Uh, yeah. Um, I heard he's a really cool dude who you can meet sometimes at a Wawa. He is. He's really. Uh, uh, he's a really cool dude, nicest guy in the world. Uh, handsome fellow too. Uh, I won't give up what he looks like, but <laughs> I um, hamburgers. Yeah. All, you know, also, who's really nice? Um, Roosh. Yeah, don't break kayfabe. Don't break kayfabe on you. <laughs> um, but but yeah. So I. I but okay, a Bandito's great, but he's not a. He's not a. He's good enough. Wrestling good enough to 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 carry the heavyweight title, but he's not a heavyweight champion. Yeah. That that's exactly it. I don't think they were wrong putting the belt on him, but no, no. Um, he's not Roosh, if that makes sense, you know. He was, I think, the right choice to take the belt off of Roosh, but I, I do not. Yeah, I, like, I, I don't agree. think he is a long-term champion. No, you know? no, no, not at all. Like I feel like that's cruel, but no, no. It, it, some people are made for it. Like here, here is, in my opinion. What it is. Ring of Honor World Champion. Do you guys know who the first world champion was? Uh I did. Why am I drawing a blank on this? I know this. Um, is it low key? Low key. Yeah, yeah. I have to say. Low key. Testing my own gangster. <laughs> Followed by Roa Joe, Austin Aries, CM Punk, James Gibson. The the amount of talent that line up James all- Gibson. <laughs> Jamie, Jamie Noble. Jamie, I, for, I, 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 know, I, for, I forgot that was his name. James Gip, James Gibbs. Brian Jamie Danielson. Noble, baby. Homicide, Takeshi Morishima, Nigel McGinnis, Jerry Lynn, Austin Aries again, Tyler Black, Roderick Strong. I could keep going Roddy. here, but you go through these lists. Jay Briscoe, like, Jay Lethal. More like a group that Jonathan Gresham belongs in. Yeah. And has belonged One of these- in. One of these things ain't like the other. Seeing what happens with Gresham here, 
is once again, I think, telling. I think the other part of it is King, Lethal, uh, Gresham, and let's just throw in all of Shane Taylor promotions, all of them, because that entire group is money, as Ryan said. Uh, let's put it out there, because people are talking about it on Twitter. People feel that AEW does not do a good enough job representing the African-American community. You want to change that narrative real quick? There are eight wrestlers that we just mentioned right there that are immediately or potentially at the top of your card and change your dynamic of your heavyweight division. Now, but they, they, ha- they have AEW to let them talent, come but... in and be themselves, though. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I don't think Shane Taylor changes if he switches over. I don't think Jay Lethal or Gresham changes. Gresham, Brian Danielson. Just, just let that sit in your head. For, for five minutes and just think of that match. Jeff, have you watched the Suzuki-Danielson match? Yeah, I have. It was good. Just just think of this, this Brian Danielson that we have in the ring what? with the foundation, Jonathan Gresham. Yeah. I mean, Suzuki's – I mean, well, Suzuki's Suzuki, but Danielson's great. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not shocked, but I'm happy to see that people are actually seeing, you know, Danielson and not Daniel Bryan, mm-hmm. you know, uh, complete. It's a very different wrestler, mm-hmm. subtly different. Yeah, yeah, that a lot of people didn't ex- know, didn't know existed because one wrestling didn't start till 2017, and oh, WWE is, you know, WWE. But, but yeah, 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 good match. I. I, just, I think it's very telling to see what happens with these wrestlers in terms of what the very near future hold for them. Them being released tells me everything. They have, they have the opportunity to go wrestle elsewhere. If we suddenly see them show up at AEW or Impact, even WWE, I mean, it's a very short turnaround, but I mean, look, how, how old's Brody King? Don't care. Yeah, he's a dude. R- 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 really, really, AEW is the one that has. He's, he's 34, so he might be too old for WWE. But, I mean, like, he's, he's a guy who you probably bring in for NXT right now. AEW is enough to look. AEW is the company that's going to have all the problems. And I say problems as in you go to WWE, you're just going to be a cog. You're going to fit in. You're going to be whatever they tell you to. You're going to be a soldier. AEW gives people the freedom to do what they want, you know, to some extent. Too much sometimes and not enough in the other. But if you start taking – I mean, they're, again, they're not wrong for taking talent. But if you start taking, like, talent – like, some of this Ring of Honor talent that are, like, big, big dogs, well – you're going to have to get an, an, another belt. You're going to have to get a trios belt. You know, it's, 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 uh, it's the booking is going to have to, ch- it's going to have to completely change. And you're not going to, you're going to have to not be afraid to not pull the trigger on some of these just other guys, you know, mm-hmm. you know, that aren't necessarily the, I don't mean like the elite necessarily, but you know what I'm saying? Like the core guys that you're seeing, you, you know, know, we get, we get, we go. The most out of this entire bit uh, of all this happening it's probably impact. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I would of think, these guys probably still go to Japan, but I would, I would bet think, the majority sign with impact. I would if, think if Gresham would go, board. right? His wife's there. God. You know? No, no, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised because AEW, but I'm just yeah, saying, I like, mean, I mean, you're right, though. Sometimes, like, you there. know. So, you know, you they could be on the road together. You got to think of people's – also what's good for personal lives necessarily as well. Yeah. No, you're spot on. You're spot on. Um, I, man, yeah. I just think we're really going to have to keep an eye on, on specifically those talents. Roosh we know is out for a while. We know he is taking care of business, getting healthy, dealing with that crazy out-of-nowhere emergency surgery he had. Um, I don't be surprised if him and Dragon Lee show up in AEW with Andrade. That that that's I think a very easy one. I think that's been hinted at for a while, of where they might want to go. Because you know, but you know, that's just that's just I think a, an easy prediction most people are reading. 
Yeah. Lethal, Gresham, Briscoes, I think are going to be very telling on what the direction is for Ring of Honor. That's going to, I think, tell you everything we need to know from a wrestling standpoint or, or a managerial standpoint. Um, while we're here, though, and I know we are approaching, like we've been doing, going at this now for a little bit here, um, I do got to say, and, and Ryan, you said earlier, buy the Talons shirts. Go support them financially as much as you can. Um, guys, I, I can't tell you. You've heard them here on the show before. Um, Beer City Bruiser, Brian Malonez, uh, Ian Riccoboni. Uh, God, I, I'm going to miss so many people. Caprice Coleman. I love Caprice Coleman. Um, there, there are people in Ring of Honor who deserve so much love, and I don't think you're going to hear us say their names a lot. And I, I think they're kind of going to go under the radar in terms of the recognition for what they do and what they bring to companies. Yeah. Um, just, but, just because you're um, a good wrestler doesn't mean you're a good person. And that's but, across any company. Caprice Coleman and a lot of these Ring of Honor guys are good, and, and women are good people. Oh, my God. Yeah. Caprice Coleman might be one of the best people I know, genuinely yeah. speaking. Yeah. Oh, bless he's, you. Bless bless you. you. He's he's just a good dude. He would be bless you. He he would be a good dude if he was working down at the gas station. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but just genuinely, if if you're a promoter and you're listening to this show, a appreciate and love you. B, these are guys who, if you have the option to book them, book them. Um, from my experience, I have no idea from a locker room standpoint but just from our experiences of interacting with them setting up interviews talking with them before and after and during um they are just class acts man class acts i i have nothing but love for for the bouncers um for being some of our first interviews we ever did um and, and being happy about it those guys owed us nothing didn't have to do anything they just want to come on and talk wrestling you know, they are guys who you want in your locker room because their brains and what they bring in terms of veteran status, I think is second to none. They have a lot of knowledge that I think they're ready to give on down to other people, and I think they benefit. Uh, they, they benefit being in your room and being on your card. They'll bring a level of uh, level of expertise that might not be there. I love these guys. I want nothing but the best for them, and I hope we see them. A lot more if we can't see them at Ring of Honor. But God, I'm hoping that we are going to see them in this new branded Ring of Honor coming next year, hopefully. Um, I'm, I'm curious to see if we keep the Ring of Honor name. That sounds really bad, but I'm, I'm kind of curious if we keep it. I don't care necessarily as long as it's good rest, as long as it's still Ring of Honor, if that makes sense, you know. Uh, what if Ring of Honor is now Global Force Wrestling? <laughs> oh, you're the worst. What if it's Ring King? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, look, I, I got to make us laugh because we just had a very serious and and uh, we don't do serious for an hour long. We need more jokes. All right. We're here to have fun and we're here to be lighthearted. This was a heavy, heavy show talking a lot of money and financials and what to look at. Um, but, hey, if you guys made it with us to the end, I appreciate y'all so much. Guys, can I get some closing thoughts here before we head on out? Yeah, keep an eye out for some amazing YouTube content. Put, my, put myself over here. Um, I can already foresee um, driving to Knoxville. Maybe we'll play a little where, where are they going. Maybe a little bit of fantasy where the, um, where some of these Ring of Honor talents could go. I think that would be really fun. Okay. Um, I also would like to point out um, that if you're not watching any ravishing reviews, you're doing it wrong. Um, that you need to go and do that. It's on our YouTube channel. Um, also. Um, if you're not in in the know. 
on Saturday, and this is on our drive to Knoxville. Um, it is going to be the Ravishing Journey. Um, there is a Ravishing Review every hour on the hour that you can check out on the drive. Hardest so, worker in the room, man. Hardest worker in the um, room. I'm butt fucking exhausted. I'll be honest with you, but um, you know, I know that um, those in other fields doing other stuff. Um, show your show your local teachers some love. Um, I know some of them are really hurting right now. Some are exhausted. Um, some of our local school counties um, are getting some mental health days in, mental health weeks, even. Um, so yeah do that um and then also make 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 sure you go to kofi.com and support us because we need it um and we want to keep going to shows so support us support everybody else you'll just be a good person okay don't be a don't be a scumbag all right don't be don't be a low-key and don't be an austin aries calling out by name here jeff and don't be uh, and don't be brody king do you have any closing thoughts? Uh, um, hopefully Ring of Honor doesn't go under. Um, but we'll see. Everything Cod said, obviously support this man. Um, he's pumping these ravishing reviews out like like a baby rabbit. Um, give this man some credit. Uh, yeah, uh, you know my motto. Watch something old, some, something new, something new to you. Support local wrestling. I can't wait to do that with you all. This weekend at Next Gen Wrestling from Tennessee. Ooh. Super, super excited. I feel like you just got some news. No, um, I, re- I, I remembered I gave a hint as to what show we're watching Saturday night as a one-off reference discussion. I gave a hint uh, in the closing on the WrestleCast on Monday. Um, oh, no. <laughs> It's it's a it's a very vague hint, but it's a hint no, none nonetheless. And I've already promised Jeff, um, and I'm holding my word on this. There's no blood money involved. It's not a crown jewel. Okay. I was told it was a really good show. Oh, somebody lied. Yeah, probably by. I don't know a mark or you know like. Oh no, man! Edge Edge Rollins Hell in a Cell. Just kidding. I don't know. I don't know. Sounds um, tempting to me. It's not going to be like bound, the last time we did this to you, uh, Jeff, where a pandemic happened immediately following. Oh, my God. Talking about getting did work. We, did, we, did we do that? Yes. I think I think we caused the pandemic by surprising Jeff with Crown Jewel or Super huh. Showdown. I don't know what they're calling it anymore. Guys, I appreciate you all. Thanks for sticking with us. <laughs> We will see you all very, very soon, especially as we head on down to Knoxville. So be great. Love you. Bye. That's another guy's bit. I appreciate him. But, uh, yeah, it is good night and goodbye time because uh, we got work in the morning. It's a lot. So we'll see you all very soon. Bang. <laughs>